Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Destiny. I'm Death from Above. Today, I want to talk about some guns, man. So, the Taken King is coming to a close. Rise of Iron will be here soon. And I wanted to talk about some of my favorite guns in the Taken King, or some of my favorite guns in year two of Destiny. So, today we're going to do auto rifles. So, I've got nine auto rifles to talk about. Three honorable mentions, three legendaries, and three exotics. They're going to be my top, top nine but uh, with distinction. So we're going to talk about the honorable mentions first. So first off, the honorable mention, my Zeranea D. Now it's not top tier, but I have had it a long time and I really do enjoy it. This one's got crowd control, focus fire, and brace frame. Arguably a god roll. The gun's never been that strong, never had its moment in the sun, but I've always liked this gun. <clears throat> it's always had a special place in my inventory, I guess you could say. But uh, I've always kind of, I'll pull it out every once in a while, use it in some PvP, bring it to some PvE. We'll just shoot some stuff with it, have some fun. This one with Focus Fire is very interesting. It's got a lot of punch. Shoots kind of like the Suros re regime without all the sound effects. But uh, it's just a cool gun. I like it. Uh, it's that mid-impact, mid-rate of fire. If you see it without the Focus Fire, you see it's got a pretty decent rate of fire. But I've always loved this gun and I wanted to talk about it. So PvE and PvP. All these guns are going to be PvE and PvP capable. Uh, very, very capable but to be very good guns. So that's the Hake Zeranea D. Uh, you get it from the gunsmith from an Arms Day Foundry order or a uh, ranking up package. Next, we'll move along to the Red Spectre. Now, this is a Red Spectre that I've received recently. Uh, I've deleted my other one. But uh, this gun, it had an interesting lineage in the Taken King. It started off with, with messed up base stats that made it look like a monster. It looked like it had monster impact. And I was very excited. I got it on, I got it pretty early on in the Taken King. I had to look up a, a video from Bife talking about it. And he was talking about it before he ever got it. He was just talking about how on paper this gun looks amazing. When it turns out to be just a middle of the road auto rifle. Mid impact, mid rate of fire, mid mag. I mean it's nothing special. Nothing amazing. Uh, you can get some pretty good talents. On it. This one's got uh, some decent talents if I ever unlock them. Uh, let's clear the way. Ladies and gentlemen, so my talent set up on this Red Spectre, I've got Counterbalance, Spray and Play, Fitted Stock, Oiled Frame, and Rifle Barrel. I like the, I like the Rifle Barrel and Counterbalance uh, opportunity there. I've had a couple different versions of this, all of which have looked decent. None of them have been amazing, but uh, they've been pretty good. So definitely giving this one an honorable mention. It's a, it's a fun gun if you get the right talent set up on it. Next up, we have... The Deal Breaker, a gun that after the April update got a little bit even better from the vendor. I uh, picked it up and I have just never leveled up this version, but I did use the Deal Breaker at the beginning of the Taken King a whole lot. It's a high impact, low rate of fire auto rifle from the Crucible vendor. Uh, it is a Hake model from the Crucible vendor. We got a lot of enemies right now. I did not plan for this in this video right now, fellas. So the Deal Breaker, like I said, high impact, low rate of fire auto rifle from Hake through the Crucible vendor. It's a really cool gun if you want to take a look at this one. Uh, like I said, all these guns are very PvE and PvP capable. Counterbalance, crowd control, brace frame. We'll take the mag size down to 20, but it becomes a laser beam. You can shoot and hit anything you want to with it. Uh, and it's really strong. It, it puts out a lot of damage. Uh, the mag size is just a little bit small. But it's a really cool looking gun. I've really enjoyed it. But uh, let's move along to the exotics. We're going to go through my top three exotics. So number three on the exotics for year two, we got the Monte Carlo. Uh, this Monte Carlo, it is my gun. It's got a lot of interesting talents going on with this exotic Monte Carlo. So when they brought back the Challenge of the Elders, uh, some of the modifiers include melee bonus. So if you got a melee kill, you got bonus points. And I would use the Monte Carlo on all three characters for that situation. So it became a very useful gun. Uh, it's got a good rate of fire, good impact. It's very PvP and PvE capable. I enjoy using it both places, and I have uh, used it for a while. It's one of those guns. I'm an Xbox player, so I didn't have it in year one. So it's pretty cool to get it into year two and start using it and see what all the hubbub was about. was never a top-tier gun in uh, year one. Year two, it's, it's got its place as far as usability. Uh, it's a very useful gun in certain situations when you need that melee charge. Uh, but all in all, it's just a good gun. I really wish the melee uh, used the front of the weapon with the big, the big old spear on the front. That would be awesome. But alas, it does not. So that's the Monte Carlo. It's a really cool gun. I like it. Never run out of melee with this thing. Next up, 
we have the Suros Regime. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite year one guns. It, it would have been my number one auto rifle for year one. For year two, it's my number two exotic auto rifle. Uh, just the Suros Regime, ladies and gentlemen. The beginning of year two, it kind of got it kind of got knocked down. It, it got taken down a peg, but uh, it looked cool, and they brought it back in new form and fashion with a black a black finish and special talents. So uh, you can see, ooh, let's kill him, kill him, kill him. So with the uh, the new Suros Regime for year two for the Taken King, you had your choice of spinning up or focus fire. You just saw spoke, focus, focus fire spinning up makes your mag the longer you fire fire faster and faster and faster so they've kind of modified that here recently to, to reduce it a little bit but spinning up still pretty cool if we get through a whole mag you can see how it spins up um, I never used this much I just kept it on focus fire I like having the punch from the the high impact of the Suros regime and that opportunity to return your health if you kill an enemy it didn't happen every time but some of the times it happens all of the time <laughs> something something anchor man uh, but Suros Regime was a very cool gun. Definitely enjoyed it in year two. Didn't get as much play as I wanted it to, but it's just to have so many guns. Just so many guns to kill things with that the Suros Regime's kind of been collecting dust lately. But it still gets my number two exotic slot for Destiny Taken King year two. So, the number one exotic. I mean, you can see it. It's the Zalo Supercell. Not because it's the best gun in the game, but because it's so useful. It's one of the few primaries that has an elemental damage anymore so anytime that arc burn came along you were using the Zalo. Zalo, 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 Star Trek, whatever. <clears throat> um, the Zalo Supercell. So <clears throat> high rate of fire, eh, mid, mid to high rate of fire, low to mid impact uh, auto rifle. It has a couple good talents. It has persistence, has bolts from the blue so double kills will charge a small amount of super energy and return ammo to the magazine. So basically your ammo gets refilled when you get a double kill. And it has the uh, <clears throat> Zala Supercell arc projectiles have a chance to chain lightning when enemies are close together. This is an ad clearing machine. If you have large groups of enemies, this is, this is the monster to do it. If you ever run heroic strikes with the uh, arc burn modifier, Zala Supercell is your best friend. And I have done that quite a few times. I mean, the, the best glimmer farm in the game is running heroic strikes. So can't argue with that <clears throat> so it's my number one exotic just for that reason but I have used it you know arc burn nightfalls we'll use it in uh, all sorts of different situations I'll use it in PvP occasionally I mean it's got the punch it's got the fun I like doing it uh, <clears throat> only problem is this ability is a little bit bad so using it in PvP you gotta change the talents all around and get kinda reused to it but PvE it's really really good <clears throat> really really good so enough of the exotics let's move along to the legendaries so my number three legendary auto rifle. <clears throat> Drum roll, please. The Hake Arminius D. That's the Zerane. Arminius D. There it is. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> so, anyway, the Hake Arminius D. <clears throat> and you're saying, what about the Doctrine of Passing? I never have liked the Doctrine of Passing, and I never really had a good one. I had a good one before it was a good one, before it was a God roll, and then after it was a God roll, I'd gotten rid of it. I'd infused it into something else, and I never feel, felt like grinding trials to get it again. And uh, I had a couple other guns that were very similar, so I didn't really ever worry about it. <clears throat> but uh, Army SD, my number three legendary auto rifle from the Taken King. High rate of fire, low impact, but it's a melt your face gun. This one has a uh, crowd control, counterbalance, and brace frame. It's got that god roll that I have enjoyed. In PvE, it's a lot of fun. PvP, it's very solid too. Only problem with PvE, PvP is see all, see all that muzzle flash? It is really hard to acquire a target through that muzzle flash. Uh, in PvE, it's a little bit simpler. They're not moving around as much. In PvP, it is it is difficult. It's kind of difficult. I've bounced around between scopes. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I love the high rate of fire archetype auto rifle. And I love the Arminius D, but in PvP, it's just a struggle. That's why it's not my top slot. It's my number three. So, uh, number three, Arminius D. Number three, Arminius D. Uh, it just, it was so, it's such a good gun on paper. It's such a good gun. I have a focus fire version that I just recently did a video about uh, comparing the fo focus fire and the counterbalance. Focus fire is actually better for PVE than the uh, counterbalance base fr frame version because the focus fire, you never run out of ammo. It's got such a big mag using it <clears throat> in conjunction with focus fire, you just never run out of ammo. But the Army NSD, very strong, especially with counterbalance. Uh, it'll definitely melt some enemies. Probably top damage gun in the game as far as primary weapon goes. But uh, I really, really like it. 
Next, number two. Number two! Where is it? Oh, hold on. My number two is in waiting, fellas. Number two is in waiting. My number two is the Hawkins Hatchet from the Iron Banner. I have all of the Iron Banner gear. Iron Banner is my favorite activity in Destiny. And this is the first Hawkins Hatchet he sold. He had amazing talents. I picked it up and I've not regretted it. So this one has perfect balance, counterbalance, and one other talent that I've yet to remember because I'm too busy killing fools with it. So counterbalance, perfect balance, and range finder. So you get that range, you get that speed to the kill, you get that stability. I mean, look at the look at the stability, look at the range. Barely holding the control stick. So uh, I haven't used this one near as much as I should, but it's an extremely solid gun, a lot of fun to use. It's very user friendly. This would be if someone was, was recommending a gun that a new person to Destiny should use, I would have said this one. I would have said grind Iron Banner, get to rank five, and get that Hawkins hatchet with those talents, because you will not be disappointed. Extremely good gun. I really like it. Very good in PvE, very good in PvP. Uh, top tier weapon right here, fellas. Top tier. I've enjoyed this gun many times in PvP, many times in PvE. I've even enjoyed it in the Iron Banner after I got it a lot. So, uh, very, very good gun. As you can see, it's that mid rate of fire, mid impact. But uh, the talents make it very stable and very accurate. <clears throat> and got, it's got decent range. So that damage fall off is not going to affect you as bad. So, drum roll, please. So, if it's not the Doctrine of Passing and it's not the Arminius D and it's not the Hawkins Hatchet, what is my number one auto rifle? For the Taken King, so far. I mean, we got like a month left. But I doubt my ideas and my thoughts and my feelings are going to change on the matter. So as we kill this last item, kill this last enemy, let's see what we got. The Soul Stealer's Claw. It's not even a God Roll, quote unquote, unquote but it's my, it's my God Roll. So the Soul Stealer's Claw is my number one auto rifle, legendary auto rifle, in uh, Destiny Year 2, the Taken King. Just because the one I got, I got this like first or second week of uh, after the April update when they brought back Challenge of the Elders and Prison of the Elders. And I just couldn't, I wanted that counterbalance roll on this gun. I really, really did. I wanted the counterbalance brace frame that I wanted to have on my Arminius and that everybody wants on their Doctrine. <clears throat> I wanted that on my Soul Stealers. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Not even close. So look at the talent that I got on it. I got Send It lightweight and glass half full all in all it doesn't look like a majorly good setup but with send it you get that extra range glass half full you get that extra damage and the gun's pretty stable in and of itself you don't have to worry about the muzzle flash like you do the arminius uh, it's a little bit more stable i feel than the doctrine on paper and base stats so you don't have to worry about that and it's just it's just been a fun gun see even at this distance i can get on target kill the enemy and just have a big old time with it so that's my number one gun in uh, Destiny Year 2, Taken King, Auto Rifle Land. What do you guys think? What's your favorite auto rifle from Taken King from Year 2? Uh, let me know in the comments. Really interested to see what you think. How would you rank the ones that I picked, and what would you rank as your favorite? Let me know in the comments, guys. And as always, I'm Death from Above. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, it means a lot to me. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. And I'm out of here. I'm going to go kill this fella. So I will see you later. See you back.